Greetings. I bought this RF modulator a um, few years back because I've got a FreeSat box and the FreeSat box doesn't have an aerial output. Uh, I bought this so I could um, basically broadcast this and pick it up on the other TVs around the house instead of having to buy separate boxes. Trouble is, this doesn't support any sort of magic eye functionality. You can't use the remote upstairs and beam it downstairs. So I bought this one, which is a Triax Trilink, which is great. You can see it's got an AV input, AV output, same as this has, an input and output. Uh, the aerial, in fact, it's got two aerial outputs. And whereas this one, you select your channel with the up and down buttons on this one, you select it with these controls on the end. But the trouble is, what you're watching now and what you're listening to now is this one. If I change channel to the triax, listen to this. You get all this interference. You don't get it on the maximum, but you do get it on the triax. So I think, okay, the triax must be a load of crap. Why else would it be doing that? But listen to this. This is with a skybox. No issues there. So we've basically got this, which is happy to listen to this but not happy to listen to the Humex. Yet the maximum is happy to listen to both. So what can you do about that? Well, one option would be to fit an audio mixer in line. As you can hear, that's all gone silent now. There's been an idea away for fishing from us. Sounds clear as a bell. Flat beds. But that's kind of chunky and impractical. In a session? Um, well, it depends really, I mean, quite so what on earth is going on? Well, here's the sound that's actually coming through. This is where we've got the sound coming into the triax. It's being looped through into this. And then from here, we're taking the tap off and monitoring it on the oscilloscope. And there's a lot of interference here, even though the maximum can't actually hear it. And the frequencies seem to be varying quite wildly. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of just noise really. Now the, uh, the sky box, if I hook it up, has a lot less noise and there's nothing coming actually. The modulator is not picking any of that up. So what can we do about it? Well, let's take a look at these modulators inside and see if we can figure that, anything out from that. First of all, this is the, the maximum. It's a single layer board. It's all based around, there's a, a PIC microcontroller here. Uh, all that is doing basically is driving the display and choosing the channel of the, um, the RF modulator. That's all the, um, the PIC is doing. Other than that, it's all separate components. And in fact, we can take a look at the circuit diagram on here. And as I said, we've got the, the pick up here, which is basically controlling the LED display and the push buttons. And it just has these connections then, which go along and drive the RF modulator just to choose a channel. Down here then we have our video amplifier because the video input is, is buffered. And we have the audio amplifier down here as well where we have our left and right audio inputs and they're both run through these buffers, they combine together and then this goes off to the modulator. A completely different design in here. We've got a micro microcontroller which is an EM78P447SAMJ. Uh, there's no shielding in here apart from what is in the, uh, the board itself. The bottom of the board is mainly, mainly copper and there's a lot of um, Copper, you know, copper on the surface as well, but uh, this doesn't appear to be sort of any sort of uh, metallized plas uh, plastic. 
and it's it seems to be based around, apart from the microcontroller, this chip here, which is an ASE 373 CAEF. And I can find no documentation anywhere on this. You can find a few people selling it, but no documentation on it. But whereas the other modulator had these transistors in its um, buffering, uh, there's these ones up here, and there's another one tucked down there as well. This one doesn't have a buffer. The input circuit is much simpler. And uh, because the rest of the circuit's so complex, I haven't actually uh, gone into tracing the rest. All I was interested in is the input stages. And you can see all we've got is left and right come through these two capacitors and into a pair of resistors. That's um, shunted down to ground there as well. Um, then you've got this one microfiber capacitor and straight into the chip and the video signal comes in two pins later, so it's on the same chip. There's not much else on there, but what can we do to improve that? And I said there's a lot of this high frequency uh, stuff here, which you want to get shot of. So what we could do with is a low pass filter. We can try doing a low pass filter to get rid of that. And we could make a simple low pass filter using the resistors that are already there. We know we've got these two 2K2 resistors. So let's try and add a capacitor there. Now, those two are in parallel, so I've assumed that they're the only um, input here. We're not we're going to ignore anything else coming up. We'll just assume they're there and see how we get on. And if I choose a capacitor of 4.7 nanofarads, that gives me a cutoff of 30 kilohertz. It's overkill. Uh, you know, we're still letting a lot more in than we should do, but Let's see how we get on. Here's that noisy input again. And I'm going to use this 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, which I fished out of my parts bin. God knows where it's come from. I had this, and I'm going to connect this between that test point, which is where all the audio signals come together, and ground, which will be on the other side of this resistor. So let's see what we get. In. Try not to bend the pins. Now I've either shorted out everything or I've got rid of the noise. So let's change channel. A little oh, bit of it's country sound. Very, very sad time, yes. Tell me what Capel Kellen was like before it was drowned. Well, it was a very rural place, and only six houses in the village, and we lived. Next door to one to the chapel. Although there wasn't a lot of there houses, you go. there were quite a few nice. heads of people that lived oh, there. Nice. And it was a very happy nice. place. But once this oh, nice. business of drowning the village started. So all I was doing there was putting the capacitor between this test point and ground on this side of the resistor. And it works. So I'll solder that in. And that's it. Job done. You can see on the scope the interference is still finding its way down the line, but beyond the two resistors in here where it's actually feeding into this chip, the, um, the capacitor is acting as a low pass filter. And you can hear, if I go back into um, country file again. Not all about broccoli. Scientists here all that noise is gone. to improve the nutrition of starchy foods. All like for the sake of pasta. one component costing a few pence. Outside the EU, around 50 countries are now growing or testing bio. And I can test that with a different input as well. Obviously, I can't test with the sky one because I have to put the lead in. But I can. For scientists like Professor Mythen, there is test potential. The, the mixer instead, and that's fine. Vegetables so I haven't affected it like on it other and of course in the devices the besides the human mixer either. So I hope someone finds this Even useful. With science on our side, Thank you very much for watching. around the fact that a healthy lifestyle always comes down to a balanced diet.